Hello friends, today we're going to solve a problem on work and energy from our chapter 14. The problem says design a roller coaster height, HA, which is this height, so from the peak here to the base here, and then height HC from the second peak to the base here, such that starting from a rest, so it starts from rest at point A, the passengers does not experience a normal force equal to zero or more than four times their weight. So if their weight is uh, W, they should not feel the limit is zero weight and then four times of the weight. So um, let's, and um, there's some given and unknowns. So we're going to talk about that. But let's, before that, let's talk about um, roller coaster a little bit. To understand the problem better so this is a typical roller coaster uh, looks like there is up and down um, thus you are traveling on a curvilinear path you are constantly changing direction of motion and you are experiencing acceleration and deceleration so how would you feel if you are going downhill until the bottom of, of, of the roller coaster you uh, and how would you feel when you're going uphill to the next peak of the roller coaster so when you're going downhill you should feel heavy right because of the heavy um, normal force and when you're going upward you're decelerating you would feel lighter there will be no low normal force and Let's before solving. Let's talk about another thing: is that how or why we d we don't fall off from a roller coaster when we're going upside down, traveling upside down. So upside down on a roller coaster, there is some um, thing that keeps us not falling from the roller coaster. First one is inertia. The inertia is due to a resistance to the change in motion. So the you have the gravity pulling downward, which is also your weight, but the change the resistance to change in motion, the inertia will press you against the um, the gravity. So the inertia would be the inertia would be stronger than the gravity or your weight so the inertia will press you against the path and you will not fall off and you have to design such a way that so the when you, you, the speed and height of the roller coaster is such that you don't fall off but due to inertia you're actually pressed against the track another question is um why do you think the roller coaster most of the roller coaster loops are elliptical not a perfect circle um the reason is that if you have a perfect roller coaster um which has a perfect circle the pushing force will be very strong um and which will be uncomfortable for the passengers and of course that will be not so safe and um we will have the same thing uh, in, in, in this our problem. So in this problem, we're asked to design uh, the height so that your um, um, the normal force doesn't go zero. So what that means is that you don't, you don't fly off the track and also it doesn't want you to um, face a normal force more than four times of your weight. So they're assuming that four times of a weight of a normal force is acceptable and beyond that it would be harmful or not safe or uncomfortable so this is the scenario uh, of our problem let's let's move to solve our problem so we always start solving a dynamics problem with uh, what is given figuring out what is given and what do we have to find or what is knowns and unknowns so in this problem given are your um, the radius of curvature rho a and rho c and it also says at point A. So in this point, at this point, the roller coaster starts from at rest. And it gives us a limit. 
that uh, the normal force should not be zero or more than uh, four times of our weight. So what are the things we need to find? So the problem asks us to find the design height HA and HC. So uh, before we jump to the solution, we always start with uh, our first thought. So what is your first thought or what could be, because um, there might be a lot of thoughts coming out, uh, coming in, in our mind, what to consider, how and where to start with. Uh, do I need to know how many passengers are there? So if you have that question, uh, we can tell that there's six people here, but the weight of each people is not given. So we can take the entire roller coaster as one mass of M. And in that way, you don't need to know how many uh, people are there in the roller coaster. The second question um, can come is that uh, where could uh, be the normal force maximum or minimum? Because we had a limit of minimum zero or like maximum four. So where do you think they may be zero, uh, zero and minimum and maximum? Well, you are sliding down from A to B, right? Um, you are going you are gaining speed, you are accelerating from A to B, your maximum acceleration would be at point B because it is zero due to gravity, you're accelerating and your maximum would be at here at point B. Now, if you have a maximum acceleration that uh, creates what? We have a, we know force equals to mass into acceleration. So if you have a maximum acceleration at point B, your force is maximum. If your force is maximum, this is horizontal line, so at point B, what will happen is that in your body, if we just write a body here, if your uh, force, M A is max, so your force is maximum, so your force would be um, downward maximum, so you will have a normal maximum at that point B. So it's most likely, we can assume that the 4 mg we should consider at point uh, B, at point uh, B. Now the other thing is then when you're going on the other side when you're going uphill right if you're um, going uphill here what's happening you're you, you have you're slowing down every second and at when you're at point C you're almost um, like a stop position you're moving slowly so you're excellent you're decelerating and then your acceleration at point C is kind of minimum are lower than than here so minimum so again your force at point C does becomes because so your mass is constant you're the same people you're in the roller coaster so now you're decelerating your acceleration is less so it most likely that the force would be less so we can assume zero um, normal force at point C now we're going to start so the solution. Uh, one more thing, when it means that the normal force is zero, it means that you're almost um, non in non-contact with the surface. That is why we put that as a limit, meaning no normal force is you're almost going off track. So um, when we start solving problem, the question comes, um, where do we start? solving problem we have kind of understood the problem but where do we start so we see the problem involves um, force right so it involves force and um, it also involves height H A N H C so force into uh, force and displacement so how come force and displacement together how can you put them together we know that force and displacement is what work so maybe we can use it for work and energy. And another thing is that uh, given here that it starts at rest. So at point A, you have, um, if it's rest, so you have velocity of zero. So it's something is zero, velocity. Um, and velocity comes from what? Kinetic energy. So you have work, kinetic energy, where does this lead you? Um, it leads you to us um, that uh, you know the principle of work and energy when you have T1 the initial kinetic energy equals to work done equals to final kinetic energy so this leads us that maybe this is an option to um, start solving the problem for this problem 
So uh, we're going to, um, it starts from there. Uh, so our solution would be uh, starting using that. But before that, we need to draw a free body diagram. So there's two scenario here. We have point B that we're looking for and also C and A. At A, it was rest, so we are not need to draw a free body diagram. And uh, there's three problems point involved so we're going to do one pro uh, point at a time a b or a c or b c either one that you want so but let's draw a free body diagram at point b because that's one of our interests so this could be a roller coaster a roller coaster image so what do we have downward we have um, our uh, force downward so we have the downward weight our weight mg downward and we also have the reaction force uh, which is normal force and opposite to the, our weight at point B actually we're in a horizontal axis we're not in curvilinear path so our tangent direction of the coaster would be this direction which is tangential direction horizontal so our normal direction would be um, this direction perpendicular to tangent so our normal uh, acceleration direction would be uh, this upward direction. So one thing that don't mix up the normal force with the normal uh, direction of the normal acceleration. So when we draw uh, draw a free body diagram for problem point C, you will see that the normal reaction force and acceleration normal acceleration direction are opposite. So let's compare that later. But just don't mix up the direction of normal force with the normal uh, acceleration. So normal acceleration is always towards the center of um, curvature so at point B we would have um, the direction facing towards B so that's why we put it A and upward and normal is because of the weight is downward and then uh, uh, the normal is upward so we have drawn the free body diagram and now we're going to apply that we said uh, principle of work and energy and that works on only two points so let's select point A and B here um to find the ha starts point so so our equation will be ta it starts from a and then we have the work done from a to b whatever the work done due to height and gravity and then we'll have b now um we know that our problem tells us um it starts from rest so this equation involves velocity this equation involves velocity because half mv square and this is work done force which is force into distance the it will involve the distance travel which is h a so v a is zero so this is cancel out this becomes zero we have only the u a b to um, t b would be half m m is the entire mass of the roller coaster and then v b square so we need to find the velocity uh, VB square or VB. So how do we um, do that? So, so we need to think how can I connect uh, velocity for for this problem? We know that if there is a normal force that we draw here, normal acceleration A N. So A N we know that A N normal acceleration involves velocity square over rho. So acceleration involves velocity so we can draw we can figure out a n at point b that can give us velocity v b and um how can we connect normal force with uh normal acceleration with normal force we know that the uh, summation of force in normal direction equals to what mass into acceleration n and uh, this acceleration n will lead us to v b square over um, rho, rho b. So rho b is also given. So this is the right approach to approach approach this problem. So to find the v b, um, we need to find um, we need to use this equation, equation of motion. So let's do that. We will do equation of motion. So if we do um, the summation of force in normal direction, all the force that is acting if from our free body diagram we see is weight is downward so we say that's negative because we're assuming upward is positive so weight is negative mg and only at point b we have discussed it should have the maximum um, normal force so we put our upper limit for mg what you also could do it'll take more time you can do solve for at, at point b 
uh, this is for at point B you can do 4 mg and 0 and then you look for the critical length and then that will also work but then since we have already used the knowledge is that B at point B the normal force would be maximum so we took the upper limit from our problem here and then 4 mg we put there and on the other side I have the mass and V B square and rho this is given which is 15 so if you just plug those value M cancel outs so you will be left with VB square equals to 45 G. So now if we plug the value of V square that we got um, uh, 45 G into our previous slide uh, equation, the principle of work and energy UAB equals to TB because T is zero. So what is the work done of UAB? When you have A and then you're traveling to uh, point B here, work done we know that the it doesn't depend on the curve path, it just depends on the displacement, so which is HA here. So MG is the force, so work done force into distance, here distance is HA and force is the weight MG. So our work done from A to B is the MGH and on the other side I have the half MV square, the kinetic energy. So if we plug VB square equals to uh, 45G, we'll have the MG cancel out and then we'll be having um, um, HA equals to 22.5 meter so we have figured out what would be the design height of of the roller coaster from point a to b now we can apply the same concept from uh, point for c we can do point a to c or we can do b to c i will show you both and the two how, how do you find the height h c so let's first draw the fee body diagram at point c here so it's almost same as the free body diagram at point B, only the difference is that so at, at C, you have the tangential direction is this, so the normal direction would be um, this one, so up plus and minus. So the normal reaction force, since if you are here, then you would be upward, so these are the same. Only thing is changing is the direction of the normal acceleration which would be towards the center of um, curvature so center of curvature so it would be downward this is the only difference that we had um, from image uh, free body diagram of B to C so now let's apply the principle of work and energy from point uh, A to C um, so this is our uh, principle of work and energy equation our T is 0 as well because it is rest what is the work done uh, or from A to C? The displacement would be, um, you see, HA minus HC. So this is the displacement actually happening from here to here, uh, from A to C. So it will be um, HA minus HC, right? And MG is the same. So work done would be here, MG multiplied by HA minus HC. And so we again don't know here, here we'll have the half m v c square, half m v c square. So how do we find v c square? Uh, we, again, we'll do the summation of force in normal direction. Now I have the weight downward and normal force upward. We put the lowest limit, which is zero, asked by the problem. So we put that and then rho c is given 20. So if we solve that, we'll get 20 as g, v squared equals to 20 g. So if we plug this value here, so half m, v squared, we can replace this one with 20 z. And then this one is mg h a minus h c. If you solve, you'll find h c, which is equals to 12.5. And then you have to plug h a equals to 40, uh, 22.5. So you'll get a 12.5 as hc now we can do the same problem for uh, we can solve hc for if we take uh, point b to c let's do that so if we apply the principle of work and energy point between point b and c so the distance travel is hc and now in this case tb is not zero so starting velocity is not zero which is m uh, vb square uh, the kinetic energy half m vb square we figured out VB square was 2045Z. And for TC, again, if we do the summation of force in normal direction, we'll find VC square equals 20Z that we just showed you previous slide. And the kinetic energy at point C would be half M uh, VC square, so 20Z. 
and uh, our work done is mg force into displacement which is hc so mghc so if we just solve it take out all those mg from both side and then if you solve you'll find uh, hc equals to 12.5 so we have solved our problem um, in uh, if you have any question just comment below i'll try to explain it further um, if needed and then um, thank you for watching um, in previous video next video we're going to solve another interesting problem but till then thank you